exactly what I think of a film and today I'm going to talk about the 2017 film The Disaster Artist. Now I was going to try to do this entire review in my time I so voice but that would have been very very tiring. The Disaster Artist is the biographical film about Tommy Wiseau and making the greatest bad movie ever made, The Room. Which, if you haven't heard about it, it's just a crazy movie where a guy just trying to make a real drama. Like the Tennessee Williams! And it fell spectacularly. And now people love it. The movie is directed, produced, and starring James Franco as Tommy Wiseau. It will have Dave Franco and Seth Rogen and a plethora of other great actors having cameos. And that's great. <clears throat> now... I don't know if I love this movie exactly, but I do like it quite a bit. And let me tell you why. This man, who is this auteur? The film, oddly enough, opens with a bunch of actors who are big in Hollywood, including J.J. Abrams and Ken Smith, who are big directors talking about Tommy Wiseau and how weird and amazing the room is. Although, the way they talk about it, they talk about it like a real great movie not a bad, good movie, or so bad it's good. So this is kind of a weird opening. Anything. Okay, well, it must be a big secret because I can't tell at all. Now it gets to the film proper where Dave Franco playing Greg Sestero is very shy on stage, but Tommy is not. Yeah, this is great. So, Greg is that as Tommy wants to be his scene partner. I was just wondering if you maybe wanted to do a scene together. You wanted this scene with me? Of course, Tommy is played by James Franco. And so Tommy goes up to his house in a Mercedes, which uh, Greg says is a nice car. But Tommy says, don't talk about to what I drive. I just mean it's expensive, it's nice, that's that's all. Don't talk about me. The what? What I drive, what I say, what I do. Don't tell anybody. This is very Tommy. Uh, he's very secretive. He doesn't like knowing people knowing us anything about him. So during a lunch scene, they have a cool bonding moment where they perform and Greg starts to be less less self-doubting and has more confidence. Tommy, I know I'm fucking amazing, man. <laughs> there you go, now you're acting, Greg. <laughs> so Tommy takes Greg to his apartment where the, uh, he offers him a Red Bull. You want a Red Bull? Which, if you don't know, Tommy Wise so loves Red Bull. And they talk about what makes them want to be actors. Uh, Greg said after watching Home Alone. Everything changed with Home Alone. Which Tommy doesn't know is a real movie. Ah, oh, you, you're Home Alone, long time. Uh, the, the, the movie, the movie Home oh, Alone? Oh, it's a movie. Uh, he wanted to be an actor, and then Tommy said it's always been his dream, but he ignored it until he was in a car accident, or a car hit him. He almost died, so he started to pursue his dream. Iron Red Light and Smash. Whoa. Very bad for Tommy. I almost die, but then I survive. Whoa. I'm doing all the other things, and I go back to my dream. And I do like this scene where Tommy says they're the same, cuz. You and me, we are the same. Oh yeah, how's, how's that? We both have this dream. That's very sweet. Later on, uh, Greg shows Tommy uh, was James Dean, which is not true. In the book, Tommy already knew about James Dean, even let 
Greg Barr wrote a book about James Dean. Taking me apart. You're tearing, you're tearing me apart. Oh, yeah, he's in motion. <laughs> moment to moment, not plastic. Well, here, uh, Tommy and Greg decide to, which also happens in real life, decide to go to the, bur the burial site of James Dean where he crashed and died. People tell him, you're not good enough, you'll never make it, but he doesn't listen. He shot them all. That'll be us one day, right? And there, while driving back, Tommy says they should move to Los Angeles. He has an apartment there, which Greg is dumbfounded when he hears, and he says, yeah. You, you, you have a place in LA? Yeah, I have an apartment that I rarely use. We can go there together. Uh, wait, Tommy, you, you, you have an apartment in LA and San Francisco? Yes, so they will live in Los Angeles and try to make it as actors. Then we see Greg's mom meet Tommy, which I love this scene in the book a lot better. She asks him how old she is, he is, and he also asks, no sex, Tommy. Like, saying, don't fuck my son, you know, because she doesn't know this guy, he's a weirdo. And he's like, we all do. And it's like, really funny. But I do like the line here. How old are you? Wow, the I question that question. Don't worry, I'm Greg age. You're 19? Yeah. I just turned 14. His strangest reaction is amazing. Oh, happy birthday. Okay. So now we're now in LA in a one bedroom apartment. Um, just the, the one bedroom? You don't want to share bed with me? Uh, um, I'm just joking! <laughs> I do like this. Yes, like Beauty and Beast. I will be Beauty, of course. <laughs> So Greg gets an agent, and Tommy starts to get jealous. Yeah, but that's kind of the hardest part. You already have an agent, right? Yeah. Okay, so you just tell agent about me. Is... Now fall asleep, everybody. Any question for a start? It sounds like you're doing, am I hearing an accent? Oh, uh, no, no, what would you mean? I... Then, at a restaurant, he meets, he meets Judd Apatow. How are you? Nice to see you. Tommy Wiseau. Hi. Yeah, nice to meet you. Thank you. Hi, young Thank lady. Thank you. And he's a fucking asshole. Okay, you don't walk up to people's table and do this. That's not how it works in this business, okay? Which way? Tell me I'd do it. You can... And he tells Tommy he will never make it in Hollywood. It's gonna happen for you, okay? But now you have to go. Well, you... maybe I... Maybe. I'm not saying maybe. I'm saying not in a million years. But after that? And not after. Which really upsets him. Now, I don't really talk about James Franco very much. And I will say this. I love James Franco's performance in Time White Style. It's, it's not just him doing the accent and making an impersonation. He's actually playing Time White Style. A very strange man with big dreams and overall seems like a good enough guy. But really, if you really read the book, he's very manipulative and a big asshole. But here, they show more of the good side of Tommy, which he does have, and they show this a lot more in the film. Uh, Greg finds Tommy sad, and they both lament how they can't get any work, and Greg says it'd be great if they could make their own movie, which Tommy replies. That great idea. It'll be great drama, like the Tennessee Williams. And he starts writing the room. He completes the script and gives it to Greg to read. Now Greg should have said right there, this fucking sucks. Place to live. There's a slight ja there's the joke that Johnny Depp available. Actually, Johnny Depp was one of the few people who time I was so wanted to play him in a biopic. So, they go on to make their movie. Tommy goes to Vincent Sawyer and tells him he wants to buy the equipment. Start at about, wait, wait, I stop you right there. Okay. We don't rent, we buy. Is that not normal or? Industry standard is pretty much that you would rent. Which is not industry standard because it's so expensive. And not only that, he's gonna shoot an HD video and on film, which is even more expensive because it requires twice the crew and different lighting. But Tommy's a visionary, according to, yeah, whatever. So, and we have a quick montage of the room being cast. Should be here any minute. Now you're riding horse. Okay, someone knock on door while you're riding horse. Who is it? 
uh, going through different people playing Lisa, and Tommy meeting the crew, including Paul Shear as the DP, director of photography. So Raffaele is one of our most experienced DPs. Seth Rogen as street supervisor Sandy, who Schlaer, he's a script supervisor on how many, Sandy? 47 shows. Oh, funny enough, later on, would say he directed most of the room, which Ridley Cheryl said is like saying he was its pilot in, in the. They're saying he was the pilot of the Feld. What the hell was that called? Gindenberg? Whatever. And he meets everybody and the crew. And then they start shooting. The first day of shooting is a movie that's not a scene that's not in the film of the room. It was actually filmed, according to Sestero, of a different altercation of Chris Sarr and Denny. Oh, this is a funny line. Yeah. Yeah. Set of the alleyway looks exactly like the real alleyway out there. That's right. That's why we do a Hollywood movie, right? Well, why don't we just shoot in the real alleyway? Because it's real Hollywood movie. That's the way they really made a set of the alleyway that looks like the real alleyway. So, this is actually a pretty good day for a shoot. The scene seems pretty legit, and they're off to a great start. Then, Greg has his scene, which Tommy tells him, have him emotion. Really, I like this movie because Greg and Tommy, they always kind of build each other up. You know, they're friends, but Tommy's weird, Greg is more normal. Greg is the one who, well in the book, he's mostly embarrassed by Tommy, but he still cares about him. So, Greg gets a better performance. Now, we're in the scene everyone wants to see. The famous water bottle scene. Now, according to Tom was said, it only took about seven takes, not 70, like this many takes. According to Tom was said, if you do that many takes, you'll never finish a movie. But I'm pretty sure Greg Sturl would say, yeah, it took this long. So basically, Tommy can't get the line right, looks at the camera. I did not hit her. I did not. And yeah, it's it's crazy. But, you know, Greg puts this in the water bottle and tells him to show emotion, and he does this amazing thing. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. And it's perfect. Now, Sandy tries to cash a check, and the guy tells him, <laughs> There's actually money in there? This account? Which surprises Sandy. And Greg is dating a girl named Amber, who doesn't really like Tommy very much. Now we have the funny scene where Greg says, I knew a dozen, I knew a girl had a dozen guys. She invaded her bad to end up Guerrero Street. I said that line terribly. Anyway, so Guerrero Street was actually the street Tommy lived on. And Tommy didn't want to use that take, but it was only usable take. But yeah, Tommy kept laughing in every reaction he had. <laughs> what a story, Mark. Cut. Why are you laughing? I have no idea. Weird time to laugh. Uh Saying it's human emotion. Greg and Amber want to move in together, which upsets Tommy. <laughs> also, after that, Tommy gets very hostile on set. So help him. You, you too. You too. Yeah. I need this to look like Titanic. The Titanic? Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. Trust me, it does. Now this is really the only scene in the movie where Tommy's hostile on set, even though he's on there. Really, he was a very bad director. He was late all the time, berated actors, and this is the only time you really see that in the movie where he says that this girl's body is disgusting. Wait, wait, cut, cut. What is this? What is this? This is disgusting. It's my what? body. No, this pimples on the makeup. Wish Paul Shear fucking gets mad at him. Go clean it. Fuck that, okay? Whoa, 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 whoa. You embarrass that girl in front of the entire whoa, whoa, crew. Hey, hey, You're hey. a dead man. There's also the part where he says, I put the dick in dictator, but they put this instead. Word director come from dictator. Rest my case. And we have the famous belly fucking scene. Why is he having sex with her belly button? He knows where her vagina is, right? 
Later on, we see Tommy not give anybody water, saying nobody would give you water in Hollywood, which is not true. They do. And then we have an actress saying that this movie is really autobiographical. Theory. Yeah. Oh. It's autobiographical. Someone in his life was a Denny, a kid brother he was always looking out for. So, later on, this is, I do not know if this happened or not, okay? Do not quote me on this. I have finished the book. I've been reading it, audiobook actually. And I think the scene's only in here because Brian Cranston and James Franco are friends after doing the movie Why Him, where Brian Cranston plays himself and he looks great. Like, he's like 50 something, he looks great. It's funny you mention that because um, I'm directing an episode of Malcolm right now. And he offers Greta Sestero a, a big, a big break in starring as a lumberjack in an episode of Malcolm in the Middle that he's directing. Now, I have no idea if he actually directed this episode or this really is a real episode, but Greg Sestero can get a big break. So, after shooting the hilarious killing self scene where James Franco, after shooting himself, keeps rubbing the dress on his crotch, I love his reaction. I wanted to keep that dress. You can never wear that dress. Uh uh, you know, Greg Sestero tries to convince uh, Tommy to stop shooting for a bit, but he says no. So, Greg shaves his beard, does the scene where he has his beard shaved. Come on, let's do it. I'm up for it. And Tommy fires Sandy and Raphael. Hey, Sandy. Raphael. Yep. I talk to you in a minute. Then we have the scene where I love, where Tommy tries to get Greg to act real because he hasn't acted real this whole movie. So Greg starts getting real, asking a bunch of questions. Tommy, I mean, no, Greg, that's not part of the scene. No way, this is your idea. Where are you from? It's a simple question. Where does the money come from, huh? Fun thing. How old are you? So if Greg is mad, storms off the movie and says the movie better be fucking awesome. I, and this movie better be fucking awesome! That's what I just said. So this is a big breakup scene. And Greg is now doing a stage play, which Tommy f shows us up to. And he says him and Amber broke up. Tommy's feel sorry and invites him to the premiere of the room. Which Greg reluctantly goes. And there's a huge turnout, which is amazing. He's back? Tommy, come on. So, Tommy goes up stage and says this. This is my movie, and this is my life. So the movie starts. First, there's a bunch of awkward silence. Then, there's uproarious laughter. <laughs> Don't touch me, motherfucker. Get out! Because the movie's fucking hilarious. Which Tommy gets sad. Greg goes out and comforts him. And tells him, that's his movie up there. Not a lot of people can do that. Right, that thing up there? That's your movie. You made that. Right, like you said, you did that all by yourself. You know how special that is? And Tommy still doesn't feel cons still feels bad. But Greg shows him the auditorium, people are laughing, and says this. How often do you think Hitchcock got a response like this? No. So Tommy goes up and says that he hopes people love his comedic movie. Which is true, because Tommy Wiseau now says that The Room is a dark comedy. And he gets Greg on stage, they have an applause. We do it together. Hey, the room! And we get a kind of. Don't you forget a. Wait, what? We get a kind of epilogue with text showing Tommy became successful as a midnight sensation with a room playing midnight showings everywhere across the world, sold out, and he made his money back and is now most famous for the room. And. That was The Disaster Artist. Now, do I love this movie? Not really. This is a good, fun movie that's heartwarming. 
how Tommy got Greg to be more confident and how Greg got Tommy the confidence to make a movie, even though it was terrible, but people love it. It is not a great adaptation of the book. The book is much better. And I am planning to adapt the room into the room book into a more faithful adaptation of the disaster artist. This is just a fun movie. James Franco definitely deserved his Golden Globe. Uh, although it's funny, the ending scene is so superficial. It's like, look, they're laughing at it. That means they like it. I'm like, really? That's the big ending? But whatever. But yes, that was the disaster artist. I really enjoyed it for the most part. I show it to a lot of people, and they seem to enjoy it too. I think it is a perfect movie for people who have never seen The Room or don't even like The Room. So yeah. And that's my review. Remember to like the video, comment, share, and subscribe if you like to. Honest Critic, out. <laughs>